off the wall that's not direct. There's a famous story that helped me figure out what is reality. And this story, whether it's true or not, I don't know. A man goes up, he finally got to see Einstein. He'd been trying to see him for years. Einstein finally agreed to see him. And the man comes in and he says, Herr Einstein, Herr Einstein, he says, there is no reality. He says that it's all an illusion. So as the story goes, Einstein gets up from his desk and slaps the man in the face. And the man says, what are you doing? He says, is that an illusion or reality? And so what I'm saying is there are some very real, there are some situations that make us so understand that there is real reality, that it's not all an illusion, like freezing to death, starving to death, uh, taking a bullet in the battle. You know what I'm talking about, a woman giving birth. You know why women are more realistic than men? What I've heard, and it's 100% true, because a woman in childbirth knows reality in a way a man could never know it. And that's why women are generally more practical than men. They know reality from the point of view of their biology. I don't know if that answers that. I don't think that answers your statement. It even relates, relates to your statement. Does it in any way begin to touch what you just said? Well, but what I'm saying is there's only the genius that could be truly neurotic because the average person can't handle uncertainty to that degree. Ah, okay, now that's true. That, well, the, the worst thing for me is to be around normal paths. Normal paths get me very upset. They freak me out. And a normal path is a, is a type of pathology. Have, have you, you're aware of that, correct? Yeah. Okay. Do you know any normal paths that get you nuts? Anything that's systematic where I have to measure drives me crazy. I can't measure. I hate it. Are, are you a mathematician? No. I, hate, I only like pure math. If it's abstract, I love it. If it's anything to do with measurement... I gotta let it go. I, I can't. I can't handle but, it. But Tony, what is your profession or what was it? I'm not sure where you're coming from professionally. Was I was a professional drama teacher. I was an actor, a singer. I'm writing now. In fact, I'm writing a book called The Myth of Authenticity. I'm going to send you a copy. Oh, I love that. The Myth of Authenticity. I love that one. Bravo, the myth of authenticity. That's a good one. I think you're going to love it. You know, I love that one. That's an inside-out story. And all the endorsements are there, like Immanuel Kant proved that there is no way to prove that two and two is four because two is the given, and where does the four come from? It doesn't <laughs> the I, I love it. This reminds me of my early days. At Queens College as an undergraduate, when I first read I and Thou by Martin Buber. Are you aware of that, of that writing? A little bit. Well, go and read I and Thou by Martin Buber. If you want to have your mind turned inside out and try to understand the set and frame, who we really are, and how you understand the difference between yourself and another person, philosophically, I and Thou is one of the most amazing essays ever written. That requires great genius to write, and I think it requires a pretty extraordinary mind to understand which is why Boomer is not read anymore, incidentally, in colleges. Today, they uh, in Philosophy 101, they read the writings of a rap star, and that passes for philosophy today at, at the college. They say, oh, look at the genius in the writing of that rap artist. Although it's illiterate, degenerate, depressing, uh, debasing, it's definitely got a message in it that's for our time, and that's going to be the new, the new curriculum now in Philosophy 101, which is the writings of a rap star. That's the world we're living in. You know, I was thinking about this today, Tony, that the the state of America has so declined in the last, well, since the hippie era, we are almost at the end line of the hippie era with what's going on, and the symbolism of the, the decay of our society is no better presented than that of bums openly dropping their pants and defecating in the streets as passerbys walk by and do nothing. Hear what I said? Passerbys do nothing. Because in a sane society, they would not let that man do that. In a sane society, the people themselves would not permit a man to do that. In a sane society, there would not be such a situation permitting men to defecate openly in the street. And so how do we get here? How do we get away from here? Why do people ignore it? Why do they let so many violent bums accost them in the streets without fighting back? Because they're afraid of the lawyers. They're afraid of a society that's turned it upside down, inside out. So where do we go from here, Tony? How do we save ourselves from this decline and fall of America? Can we ever come back from the decline and fall of America in, in 30 seconds or less? Dr. Savage, the people who run the country are the people with the high IQs. The bums are the misfits. 
who cannot fit. Think about how structured our life has become. Everyone with these high IQs only structure, 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 and overstructure. You can't live in an overstructured world. You're going to have a lot of misfits. The artist cannot live in a structured world. Oh, no, you make a very good point. But can a structured world tolerate the misfit ad infinitum? If it's balanced. If the structure is But it isn't balanced. If the misfit can't fit in, the misfit needs to be given a place for the misfit. In that case, it's called a mental institution. What are we supposed to do? Step over fecal matter in, a, in New York City or San Francisco forever? No. A different education. When he was young, you can't have all Einsteins. You've got to have educations that are balanced, not for Yes, commodity. you're right. But you also have to constrain those who refuse to be constrained. Tony, as usual, a pleasure to hear from you. I'm sorry we are so short of time. I love this type of discussion. It's certainly more interesting than Jeb Bush and which suit he's wearing today. The time is 19 minutes after the hour. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation, and it's uh, Friday. So it's a departure from the normal heavy-duty news cycle. And it's also been a very, very tragic week in the news cycle. Awful the mayhem, just mayhem. And a declining civilization is not a pretty sight to look at. I, I admire, I see people in the suburbs, white couples. They're, they're, igno they're, they're ignorant of what's going on. And I say to myself, ignorance is bliss. I mean, the adage is true. Ignorance is bliss. They walk around like nothing has changed. Nothing. They, it's like 1950s, Norman Rockwell, nothing's ever going to change. There's no ISIS. There's no race war going on in America. Obama's a wonderful man. Uh, Hillary is a wonderful woman. They live in a dreamland. And this is what passes for intelligence in the white suburbs of America. It's shocking, you know. What can you say to them? You're going to insult them? They're not going to accept what you say to them. They, they live in, a, in, a, in another universe. And uh, this is basically it. It's hard to look at when a civilization is declining like this. Anyway, so I want to go back to some of the more... I don't know, topical issues rather than the heavy-duty news issues. So I'll take some calls. It's that simple. WBAP in Dallas. Jim, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hello, Michael. I started listening to you and watching you on TV when I was young. I think I was a teenager. And then I picked you back up on a radio station. I live out in the country and my daughter lives in town. And we commute on Fridays. I bring my granddaughter home. And she hear the promo of my well, so you've been listening to me since I had my three-month television career on MSNBC? I watched you on TV, and I... I missed Do you know that I had bigger ratings on Saturday afternoon on MSNBC than some of the hosts have at night? My afternoon ratings, they gave me the lowest possible slot. I had something like a 900,000 uh, listenership, which was bigger than most of them have during the nighttime right now and of course for political reasons they got rid of me and they don't really care about making money it's not about that at all it's to keep people like Al Sharpton off the street and protesting outside the offices of those who are robbing the nation blind thank you for the call my friend and that's a joke <laughs> but Jim on BAP thanks for that very very nice comment WBAP again Pamela fire away what's on your mind we got a minute 30 to fire it up go ahead I will hurry I enjoy your stories, the music you play, your sage wisdom, but most of all, your courage to stand up for uh, people that are out here like us. The other day, when you were talking about um, the liberals and their eye, I, w I was listening to you. Oh, I ask why all, most liberals have bug eyes. Right, well... They have bug eyes. I mean, have you noticed Hillary Clinton stares? She has a, a stare, like a, a Charles Manson look to her eyes. Exactly. Like she's going to... She stares at people to intimidate them. Hillary Clinton uses that stare, that Charlie Manson look, in order to make people... She frightens people into submission. Also, 
also Obama and also Michelle. If you Google uh, San Paku, and it shows just like Manson's eye, and it will show you there, and it lists Obama and Michelle. And right. Well, they have they have they have eyes that are different than you and I. Liberals have eyes different than you and I. <laughs> that kind of rhymes. But Hillary Clinton's stare is a Charles Manson look. That's meant to intimidate. It's eerie. It's just eerie. Evita Perón. That's all. Think Evita Perón. Think of the Peronista coming to power. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. It is. Time for the sound of the Savage Nation. We haven't played any sound bites. Let's begin uh, with Donald Trump on Bloomberg saying tax the rich more, taking the wind out of the sails of those who would like to undermine him by saying he only represents the rich. Listen to clip number one. I would say that the hedge fund people make a lot of money and they pay very little tax. I'm about the middle class. I want the middle class to be thriving again. We're losing our middle class. So change the tax code? Uh, I would change it. I would simplify it. I would. But in this respect, you want to tax carried interest in the same way as ordinary income is taxed. I would take carried interest out, and I would let people that are making hundreds of millions of dollars a year pay some tax because right now they're paying very little tax, and I think it's outrageous. Right. I want to lower taxes for the middle class. I want to lower taxes for people that are making a lot of money that need incentives. So that would so that would affect not just hedge fund people. That would also affect people in limited real estate partnerships, of, of which you were in a fair number. I'm okay. So you're, proposed, okay you're proposing that you'd like to raise taxes on yourself That's in this right. instance. That's right. I'm okay with it. Okay. I'm, you know, ready, willing. You see my statements. I mean, I do very well. I don't mind paying some tax. The middle class is getting clobbered in this country. You know, the middle class built this All right, country. Well, okay, so the reporter thought that he would undermine Trump. Trump said, no, I don't mind paying more taxes. But he's talking about individuals such as those who run hedge funds who don't report their income as income. It's reported as something else as something else, which, according to an IRS loophole, permits them to not declare it as a regular income. Therefore, they're not paying a full 39% of Fed. They're paying a much lower rate. And so he's saying, let's end that loophole. Very good. Now, in the next clip, he says he represents the silent majority in clip two. Let's hear that one. So you have a silent majority in this country that feels abused, that feels forgotten, that feels mistreated. And it's a term that hasn't been brought up in years, as you know. People haven't heard that term in many years. And it's sort of interesting as to why. There are all different reasons. But I think it's a very descriptive term. Every time I speak, I have sold out crowds. Every time I speak, I have standing ovations. Every single time. It's the silent majority. They want to see wins. They want to see us have victory. We're not having victory anymore in this country. That's correct. He's 100% right. Now, that was a Spiro Agnew uh, statement that he represented the silent majority, which is fine. It doesn't matter where it came from. But we are the silent majority, and we have been silenced. And I've said that for years. And now Trump finally represents those of us who actually are the majority in this country, the hardest working people, the highest taxpayers in this country, and the ones who are dumped on by all of the others. And frankly, we're dying for a voice to come along, like Donald Trump, to stand up and speak for us. It's really very clear. So let's uh, go to clip three. There is no better expression for what's happening, because this is a movement. There is no better expression for what's happening than the expression silent majority, because that's what's happening. People are coming out. In Alabama, we had more than 30,000 people on a very, very warm day with rain getting ready to pour down in a stadium. It was an unbelievable. You saw 4,000 people the other night in Iowa. You saw what happened in New Hampshire. You saw what happened today for a luncheon where it broke every record. We have a silent majority that wants this country to have victories again, and we're going to do it. Okay, so now compare him with Manson's eyes, Hillary, where she attacks people who want to stop the slaughter of uh, babies, the infanticide of Planned Parenthood. She calls them terrorists. Listen to Manson in clip four. Marco Rubio brags about wanting to deny victims of rape and incest access to health care, to an abortion. 
Jeb Bush says Planned Parenthood shouldn't get a penny. Your governor right here in Ohio banned state funding for some rape crisis 